Hello again, I'm Yalda Hakim. You're watching Impact from the BBC. This month, the Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, said he may never travel abroad again, claiming he's suffering from exhaustion. Instead, he has entrusted his responsibilities to the first elected political leader of the Tibetan community in exile. Since 2011, Dr. Lobsang Sange, who joins me now here in the studio, has led the global movement that campaigns for Tibetan rights and freedoms under Chinese rule. Let's just take a look at the background. As I was saying, Dr. Lobsang Sange joins me here in the studio. Thank you so much uh, for being here. We're just watching some of your background there. I mean, the, the Chinese government have accused you of creating all sorts of trouble within Tibet. Uh, yes, they call me 100% separatists, that I've never done anything good for Tibet and Tibetan people. I disagree, but even if they say 99% and leave 1%, uh, room for improvement, they have not left that. But all I'm doing is you know, advocating the basic rights of the Tibetan people, genuine autonomy within China, within the framework of the Chinese constitution. And what we promote is dialogue between envoys of the Dalai Lama and representatives of the Chinese government. So this is a very reasonable, non-violent, peaceful way of solving the issue of Tibet. So, Is the dialogue taking place? Unfortunately not. Uh, since January of 2010, it's been now more than seven years, there has been no dialogue between the envoys of the Dalai Lama and Chinese representative. And we would like to see uh, that the issue of Tibet resolved peacefully. Because they refuse to meet with you. They won't talk to you. Uh, they, I don't think they will meet with me. At least they should meet with the envoys of the Dalai Lama. You know, he's a spiritual leader and he's most revered around the world. And he's very reasonable as well. Mm. And I hope uh, President Xi Jinping in the second term will look at Tibet as a low-hanging fruit. Because in second term, normally, they do deal with complicated issues like Barack Obama dealing with Iran and Cuba. Hopefully, President Xi Jinping will you know, continue his father's legacy. His father was very close to late Pension Lama. Mm. He was very familiar with the Tibet issue. Hopefully, uh, you know, Xi Jinping will be like his father. It's, uh, you know, China's growing presence on the international stage, its economic growth and, and power. Have you found that attitudes globally um, towards the Tibetan cause has diminished as a result? Not just Tibetan cause, generally human rights, democracy, environmental rights, all these discourse are diminished or diluted in all the countries where they have free trade agreement, you know. Now in the 19th party Congress, Xi Jinping has said, Xi Jinping's thought is socialism with Chinese characteristic in new era, which means no liberal democracy, no freedom of speech, no election, just one party rule. That is what they're bringing to the table. A new era means the international frontier, international community. So that's the challenge. And hence, I've been to Australia, New Zealand, Denmark, Norway, just recently, and they all don't want to talk much about Tibet, human rights, democracy. This is you know, quite scary because there's a lot of self-censorship going on. So the choice is... Because they're concerned about uh, you know, damaging their relationships with China. Precisely. But the issue is, should we transform and should we transform China and make them look more like us, liberal democracy, or should we transform to look more like China? That's the choice, you know. So hence, uh, we have to take a principled stand. Of course, you must have free trade. 
You must engage with China, but don't give free pass. A lot of countries pass. have been with this one belt, one road. That's true. Don't give free pass on human rights. One belt, one road. Sixty some countries have subscribed to it. It's okay, you know. But as far as Tibet is concerned, we lost our country after one road. Chinese promised us that this road will lead to prosperity and peace, and we helped them build that road. And Chinese paid us silver coins. In fact, they built a silver coin factory in Chengdu. And after the road was, complete, road was completed, trucks came, tanks came, guns came. That's how our country was, you know, uh, occupied. So one bell, one road is good. But I think there should be quid pro quo and, you know, principled trade based on human rights as well. The Dalai Lama, we're hearing reports, is saying that he probably won't travel as much or will probably not travel at all abroad. So much of the hope of the campaigning, the cause, is now on you. Now, that's a big shoes to fill. And His Holiness Dalai Lama recently told a group of youth who had come from all over that, you know, uh, I will be traveling more on his behalf. But I will do so. But His Holiness is very healthy. You know, he will be traveling. Uh, to various countries around the world. Now, he's the best spokesperson and the best face for the Tibetan cause. So I wouldn't be able to fill in his shoes, but he's definitely, you know, uh, sharing or you know, giving me more responsibilities. And I will do the best I can. Lobsung, uh, thank you so much for joining us here on the program. Thank you thoughts. so much, Yelda. Good to see you again. Thank you. Likewise. Likewise.